you into not receiving God's gift of uh, righteousness right now. Well, I don't believe God cares about me. That's unbelief. I don't think my situation can change. That's unbelief. Um, I said something before, but nothing really happened. That's because you didn't believe it. That's unbelief. God's word is true. Do you ever have somebody that used, they gave you their word and you, you took them and said, whenever they say something, I can trust them because they always told me the truth? God's word will always tell you the truth. Because you know why? The Bible lets us know in John chapter 8, verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. God's word is the truth. Put God's word first. Don't believe everybody else. Put God's word first in your situation. Amen. It brings service of deliverance. God's word does. It's getting loose of the things that have you bound. God's word can help you do that. And being set free. Amen. John chapter uh, 8, verse 32, it says, You shall know that truth. Knowing the truth, you have to know it. See, some people go around, well, the truth's going to set me free. The truth's going to set me free. That's like saying, that's hot, that's hot. Until you know the truth. You know it's hot. You know that person done you wrong. You know that person didn't treat you right. You know that person cheated on you. You know that person that promised to pay you never paid you, and now they're back to borrow some more. You know. What do you do with what you know? You learn from it. God wants you to know the truth and the truth will set you free. In Psalms 96, verse 13, it says, when he comes, he's coming. Jesus is coming. Here's what he's going to do. He's going to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with the truth. When Jesus comes back, he's coming back to give us right standing, those that are serving him. Amen. When I die, I'm going to heaven. Unless the Lord comes between now and then. Either way, I benefit. I'm going to roll and reign with him in a new heaven and a new earth. I have right standing with him. His truth set me free. He's going to judge the world. He's going to judge the earth. You will be judged by him. Amen. Hallelujah. But you know what? Some of you have a switch of life. Amen. Let me put it this way. Do you ever walk into a room and see a light switch on the wall? And the room is all dark. Once you learn what a light switch is for, and the room's all dark, you say, oh, if I turn this light switch on, what happened? As soon as you turn it on the on position, power flows from the switch to the lights, and guess what? The lights only do what they're made to do when it gets power. That's to burn out. Some of you are burnt out. <laughs> and you have to replace the bulbs. <laughs> but the power is still flowing. See, if nobody ever, well, it's dark in here. Oh, a light switch. Well, I'm not turning that on. I'll just go through here and I'll stumble and fall over this. I'll walk up over here and stumble and bump into that. See, that's how some of you are walking in your life. You never turn the switch of faith on. And you're walking in darkness, you're walking in bondage. And as soon as you turn the switch of faith, with faith, all things are possible to them that believe. And God has given every one of us a measure of faith, including you. And all you got to do is turn the faith switch on and leave it on and say, okay, God, I'm going to be in right standard with you. I have favor with you. Hallelujah. You're going to turn this situation around, and I am going to be blessed. In 1 Kings chapter 17... Verse 4, here we find a man of God, a man that was in right standing with God, amen. Famine was hitting the land, amen. He went and he spoke out against judgment and people were after him. And all of a sudden he finds himself out somewhere laying, laying down and here God commanded the ravens to feed him. Why? Everybody else needed something to eat. It was a drought. There wasn't no rain. But guess who God was showing favor with? The man of God. What did he say? Hey, old raven bird, I know you like to eat, but guess what? Before you eat, raven, I want you to get some food twice a day and take it to this one that I'm going to show favor with. I command you, raven, to feed that man of God of mine. See, if you're out there and you can't have your needs met, God will send help in time of need. He might even send a raven to your house. And I'm not talking about somebody out of the Baltimore football team. 
But praise God, if one of them show up, find out why they're there. Amen. And the raven was sent there to feed him. And after a while, he got comfortable. I got two meals a day. I got water to drink. And all of a sudden, things change. Things will change. Man of God hears again in the same chapter. Amen. This time, verse 9. He says, I want you to get up and go to a certain city. He said, God said, I commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. The word sustain means to take care of you and provide for you and to help you. So the man of God gets up. The raven's no more coming. The situation's changed. Do you ever have situations change on you? Just when you thought you got it all settled, all planned, and your future was all in control, and you thought the life that you have built with yourself is going to be the same, and all of a sudden it seems like it's all falling apart under your feet? Amen. That's what happened here. So God says, get up, man of God. I commanded a raven. I can still take care of you. You're still in right standing with me. Don't panic. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. Don't give up. Keep your eyes on me. I'm commanding a widow woman to sustain you. She's over there in the next town, and she'll meet you at the gate. I thought the man of God said, Woo, a rich widow woman. I have favor with God. I can imagine her husband kept her very well, probably provided for her. Oh, she's probably going to meet me in one of them big fancy chariots. She might even have a big picnic basket on the back. Man, I could eat some of that there good fried chicken. Man, that raven wasn't bringing me none. He had his appetites all up. He goes up over the hill, looks down over there. He sees a little woman at the gate picking up two little sticks, had a handful of meal in her hand. And here's what this woman was saying. I got, the man of God probably saying, this can't be the right woman. Here's what she was saying. I'm going to make me a little fire. I'm going to bake me a little cake. I'm going to pat it and roll it. Amen. Me and my little boy, we're going to eat it, and we're going to die. Some of you are out there, you're at rock bottom. You think all you got left in life is two little sticks, a handful of something, and just enough to barely get by, and you don't know whether you and your children are going to die. God's going to send somebody to tell you to show favor with. You give, then it will shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down, shaking together, running over. Then God's going to have somebody to give unto you. This woman had to make a choice. Here comes the favor of God down over the hill, the man of God. Hey, woman, I heard you what you were saying, but you know what? Make me a cake first. She didn't even have enough for her and her boy. But God showed him favor because he was in right standing, and God began to speak to this woman because God said, I commanded a woman to sustain you. All of a sudden, down inside, this woman said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but, man of God, you're getting the top right off the top. He got the best cake. He got a cup of water. And you know what? By her doing that, what she said was going to remember, confession comes before possession. Her confession was, we ain't going to make it. There ain't no possible. I love my son, but I can't even save my son. I can't even save myself. Now somebody else is coming along and needs help. Somebody might come along in your life and needs help, and if you guess what, you reap what you sell. You ever help somebody and you needed help yourself? You're opening yourself up for windows of blessings. So don't tell me if you help somebody, God ain't in it. God can bless you. And all of a sudden, this woman and her boy had enough to eat the whole way through the drought. Three, almost three and a half years, God took care of them. Why? Because the man of God was walking in righteousness with God, and God says, I will take care of you. You want God to take care of you? God knows how. Amen. In 2 Kings chapter 4, now we find another widow woman. Amen. Her husband was a prophet. He died. They had two sons. The bills were overdue. The bill collectors were coming. was going to take her two sons away from her and make them work off the debt. You're talking about being between a rock and a hard place. But remember, what was her husband? He was a man of God. Somebody was walking in right standing with God. God says, I got to make a way for this woman. I got to provide for what her husband that served me to take care of. So God sends the man of God there and says, woman, what do you got in your house? She said, nothing but a little crude of oil in a pot. And when she said nothing, I believe she sold everything that she could sell to try to get the debtors away. I believe she 
offered somebody, had yard sales and you, you name it, like we do nowadays, trying to get extra income. She was at rock bottom. The collectors were coming to take her two sons, and all she had was a little crude of oil in a vessel. And the man of God said, this is what I command you to do, because I'm in right standing with God. I believe God's going to turn your situation around. This man of God believes God's going to turn your situation around if you obey the word. He said, go and borrow all the empty vessels that you can find. Empty vessels? What's empty vessels going to do? I need something with something in it. See, when God's about ready to bless you, don't look at the blessing the wrong way. Look at it as an increase because God can fulfill what he says he can do. And after a while, they got all the empty vessels. The two boys come in and say, Mama, there ain't no more to borrow. And what God said, he said, don't borrow a few. Borrow all the empty vessels that you can find. In plain words, he was said, think big. Can you think big right now? How big is your God? You got bills that are overdue? Maybe you're a widow woman or maybe your wife died and you got children to take care of. Maybe the bill collectors are threatening you. And you're looking at the problem instead of the source. I got news for you. If you're walking in righteousness, which is the gift of God, and right standing with God because you confessed yourself and gave yourself to God, God the Father will not forsake you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He's right there, but you have to listen to what he's telling you to do. And he's going to tell you to do not what you've been doing and walking away from him, not what you've been doing, not believing him, but believe his word. My children come to my house once in a while and say, Daddy, I like a sandwich. I said, the refrigerator's right where it used to always be. It's in the same kitchen. You lived here before. You know where the lunch meat's at. You know where this is at and that's at. Go make yourself a sandwich, but make sure you clean up after yourself. You know what they do? They don't say, do you really mean it? No, they go and do it. Now, if they would stand there and say, Dad, I need a sandwich after I told them what to do. Dad, I need a sandwich. Told them what to, you know what I say? What's wrong with you, kid? Did you hear what your daddy told you to do? I ain't getting up and doing it for you. You got to make an effort. <laughs> I provided it for you. And you know what God's saying? I'm not going to do it for you. You have to make the effort. He made you an agent of choice. Amen. So after a while, they begin to pour and every vessel got filled. Amen. And everything was taken care of. Why? Because God cared. Second Kings chapter 20. Maybe some of you are out there and you're dying. The doctors gave up on you. You feel your life is going downhill real fast. Ain't much hope. The world looks a little different when you're dying, don't it? Here's a man named Hezekiah, sick unto death. All of a sudden, he does something. He turns his face, and he prays unto the Lord. What I like about Hezekiah, he was once that walked in righteousness. Now he has to go back and remember Here's what Hezekiah begins to say in 2 Kings chapter 20. Lord, remember how I have walked before thee in truth. How I had walked with thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And had done that which was good in thy sight. And then he wept. He repented. He felt sorry for the wrong that he has done. He remembers how it was. But he admit that he wasn't doing it no more. Some of you out there used to walk with God. Some of you knew how God would move. Some of you were raised in the word of God. Now you have to think back, well, I remember when I used to go to church. I remember when I used to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I remember when I used to dance in the church and and sing songs in the church. I remember when I used to commit myself. You see, you remember what you used to do will not do it. There's an old song that we used to sing on the church, and every time I preach on it, it comes to mind. Do Lord, oh, do Lord, do you remember me? Do Lord, oh, do Lord, do you remember me? See, this is where Hezekiah was. Lord, do you remember how I walked? Yeah, God remembers how you That's why he's dealing with you now, Hezekiah. Because, <laughs> see, God sent a man of God to Hezekiah's house, and here's what the man of God said to him in Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet went to Hezekiah. He said, Hezekiah, get your house in order because you're surely going to die. Maybe the doctor come to you and said, oh, we've done all we can do for you. You're surely going to die. I know people that doctors said they ain't going to live and they're still living. Why? Because they made the right choice. They called out on 
the creating God, the miracle worker, the healer, the deliverer. Hezekiah had to make a choice. Get your house in order, you're surely going to die. The man of God got out of there real quick because he wanted to make sure Hezekiah wasn't going to upset with that message. And on the way out, God said, man of God, go back. Go back. I can imagine the man of God saying, Lord, you sure? I, I, I think I told him what you told me to tell him. <laughs> I want to get out of here. <laughs> no, go back and tell him that the Lord has added 15 years to his life. Remember, God sent a man there to tell him he was good. Why was he going to die? Because he was not walking with God. See, if you ain't walking with God, you open yourself up to the destroyer. His name is Satan to come to kill, steal, and destroy sickness and disease, curses that were passed on down from your natural birth bloodline that run in the family. Doctors ask you, the mom, you women out there, does mama have this, does grandma have this, and you write it down, and, yeah, it runs in there, and aunt so-and-so had it, and she died, and blah, 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 I'm right around there, and the doctor tell me now I'm going to die. I might as well just get used to it because that's all hopeless. No, it's not hopeless for you. God can add good years of health to your life if you walk with him. God added 15 years to his life. God met the wit uh, widow's need with two sons after her prophet, man of God, went on to be with the Lord. Amen. Man of God was doing what God told him to do, and a raven came and fed him, and all of a sudden that left. God commanded a widow woman that couldn't even meet her own needs to sustain him, and then she got blessed. David, he went out and obedient to his father to feed his brothers and take the, the victuals and the food out there for him. Even the king saw himself said, man, King Saul should have been out there, somebody that was walking with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, God wants to bless you. God wants to help you, and God wants to use you. Amen. Is your faith switch on? Is God leading you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, Jesus, he wants you to confess. He wants you to believe. He wants you to trust in him. Amen. See, God still knows how to do miracles. But see, God don't want you to be snared with the words of your mouth that I quoted a little earlier in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. Amen. But see, Mark, you got your Bible. Turn with me in Mark chapter 11. Here's what God also says in his word. If you called up to me, or maybe you got there before me, amen. But we're not having a race. Amen. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Here is what Jesus said. Have faith in God. Know that you are walking in right standard with God if you ever ask Jesus Christ into your heart. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith in God, Mark chapter 11, verse 23 now, that what whosoever, every one of you out there are a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. That means nobody is different from anybody else. Verily I say unto you that if you have faith in God, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, the problem, the situation that's in your life, it might be a giant of the enemy, Amen. It might be a lack during drought and hard times. It might be with bills overdue. It might be with a bad doctor's report of death. But guess what? Whatever that is, God says, if you will speak to that mountain or that situation, but thou, and be thou removed, and same words, get thou off of me. Shake this off. I'm not believing the report of man. I'm believing the report of God. And be thou cast in the sea, and doubt not in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith. Remember, confession is before possession. See, some of you are out there reaping what you've been saying about yourself or what other people said about yourself. Do you ever have somebody from little on up tell you that you, you'll never amount to nothing? And when you got older, you found out, well, I really don't feel like I accomplished anything. Why? Because somebody spoke out on you, and you accepted that. They might have said other things about you. And this and that and those words destroy what God created you to be because you believe the words of people instead of the word of God. 
And Jesus said, he gave you the authority and he gave me the authority to come and speak against them. Where there's an old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Yes, those names will. Sometimes those words last longer than the hurt from a rock or a stick. Amen. If you shall believe in thy heart and shall believe that those things which he saith, the person saith, they shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So whosoever saith something, you're going to have whatsoever you saith, and some of you are having whatsoever you've been saying. I'll never get out of this. I'll never get any better. I'll never have anything. I'll never have anybody to love me. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then you turn around and say, see, I told you so. I'll never get promoted at work. Well, you just said you never will. I'll never have favor with anybody. God says you can. Who are you going to believe? But you will have what you've been saying. Run your life and rewind for a moment. Just stop and think, what have I been saying here lately? I don't know how I'm going to get out of this mess. I can show you a way out. Jesus said, I can make a way where there seemed to be no way. I've been there plenty of times. I don't know how I'm going to be able to pay this bill, but I trust in him, and I keep giving my tithes and offerings, and somehow or other, he always brings it to pass. I used to say this, but I don't say this no more. So you're not going to hear me say this, but this is what I used to say, and I ain't saying it no more. God ain't never failed me yet. <laughs> God said, do you expect me to fail you? I said, no, God. He said, why are you saying that? I don't say that no more. So you didn't hear me say that, did you? Well, if you heard me say that, you should be listening to the rest of the stuff I told you. Got you, didn't I? God don't know how to fail. Amen. You shall have therefore whatever you say. Verse 24, Mark chapter 11. Therefore I say unto you, Jesus is talking to the Son of God, what things whoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Aren't you glad that God wants to lead you in the path of righteousness? Aren't you glad that God wants you to be in right standing with him? Aren't you glad that it's a gift from God? Aren't you glad that God will help you, amen, just like he did those ones we read in 1 Samuel chapter 17, David fighting Goliath, because he said, the same God that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear and out of the paw of this old Philistine, the hands of this Philistine, is the same God that's here today. God knows how. Amen. The man of God says, wow. I thought that raven was feeding me good, but this is good now. This woman that didn't have enough for herself to eat and her boy, man, she made me a cake first, and guess what? She's eating good now, and I'm eating good. All because God got involved. Amen. The woman that was a panic about, I wonder if they're coming to take my two boys away tomorrow. Her boys are still at home. Why? Because she blessed the man of God. Because God says, I commanded her with a woman to sustain you. They couldn't even take care of herself. Over there, Amen. Tell her, that, what do you have in your house, woman? See, some of you think you ain't got nothing. If you have anything, well, preacher, I ain't got nothing. You got yourself, don't you? Give yourself to God and let him fill your empty vessel. And guess what? It will meet all your needs. It's his righteousness and his spirit. Just like Hezekiah got a report, you're going to die. Doctors might say you're going to die. But you get in right standing with God, and like Hezekiah did, he went back and repented because he was backslidden. Walk with God. Now he says, Lord, remember when I walked with you? Remember when I trusted you and had a, when I did have a perfect? He knew he didn't no more. Some of you be honest with yourself and get back to God, and he'll receive you, and he'll add blessed years of your life just like he did Hezekiah. He wants to bless you. He wants to help you. Aren't you glad that God cares about you? Send somebody like me or somebody else to preach to you. Amen. Or you're turned in here by mistake, but now you're beginning to hear. And guess what? God wants to save you and use you and bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad God cared enough about you today. Amen. What we read there in Romans chapter 10, verse 10, that we shall confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, from all things that keep us walking in the blessing and the prosperity and the manifestation of God and right standing with God. I can tell you I'm in right standing with God. I got a direct line, 1-800-JSUS, that Jesus said I can ask the Father anything in my name. I'm going to say a prayer here today, and I'm going to ask God 
will speak to your heart. But remember, it has to be confession out of your mouth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because he wants to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's in 1 John 1 and 9. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation in Romans 10, 10. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us about that different time. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to say this prayer with this preacher today. Don't care about who's in front of you. Don't care about who's behind you. But just say it and mean it from your heart. Hey, dear God in heaven. Yes, go ahead and say it. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry for all my unrighteousness. Lord, help me to do right, which is righteousness, and not live in a world of unrighteousness, of doing wrong. I confess my sins and I give my life to you. I'm sorry for the life that I have lived. I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me with your blood from all unrighteousness. You said in your word, according to Romans 10, 9, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart, I shall be saved. With my heart right now, I'm confessing with my mouth. Lord, I want the favor of God. I want the blessings of God. I want the gift of righteousness. I want my life to be completely sold out to you 100%. I give myself to you. My gift to you, God, is myself. My gift to you is all my weaknesses, all my faults, all my wrongdoings. And Lord, I come boldly into the throne room of grace after this confession and ask.